come to worship this Easter Sunday. It is so good to have you with us once again, especially as we celebrate the good news of the resurrection of Christ. Once again, Dan has excelled at beginning this service with an Easter prelude. And every Sunday he plays well, but on Easter Sundays he really pulls out the stops. And so thank you, Dan, for that great music. I have teased him oftentimes that really after hearing a prelude like that, we can just all go home because it is fantastic. So thanks again for that music. My name is Jennifer Jaimez. I serve St. Mark's United Church of Christ in Bloomington, Minnesota. I, along with Scott Seifert, our intern, and Dan, our amazing musician, welcome you to this worship service. I pray that this service feeds your spirit and offers you hope as we go through our days this service, as well as all of our other services, can be found on our Facebook page as well as on our YouTube channel located under St. Mark's United Church of Christ, Bloomington, Minnesota. We will be celebrating Holy Communion this day, so I invite you to have a piece of bread and a cup of tea or coffee or, if you want, a cup of wine nearby. If you don't have those nearby, you can always pause this service, gather them, and then resume. With all of that being said, I invite you to take a breath in and a breath out so that we can prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day. If you have a bulletin, please join me in the call to worship. Otherwise, I invite you to hear these words. Holy God, lift us from the ordinary and overwhelm us with the wonder of this holy day. Let our pulse quicken and our spirit soar. Overwhelm us with the hope that springs out of darkness, with light that sparkles through all the brokenness, with peace that lasts beyond an instant and washes away worry, with a glimpse of world harmony and our role in its shaping, with joy that sets voices singing and our feet to tapping and lifts us to the heights of praise. Together, let us raise our voices and sing. Let us together sing the opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Dan.
us pray. Risen healer, on this blessed day, we celebrate the new life you have shown to all humans and share with all creation. Give us eyes to see your new life bursting out around us. Open our hearts to receive your new life, to trust and hope, to accept with gratitude, to share with abandon. Thank you for this amazing gift. Accept our worship and our work as humble signs of our gratitude. In the promise of your grace, we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite all the young people to come closer up to the screen. Happy Easter. I am so glad to see you, even if it's through a virtual experience. And I trust that next Easter we will be gathered all together in person. There are so many things that I love about Easter. You might have heard that I love Easter peeps, you know, those little marshmallow things that are coated in sugar. I even have a special way of eating them. I love Reese's peanut butter eggs. Reese's peanut butter in the shape of an egg, what more do we need? I love sharing meal with my family and I get to do that later on today. And I even love the orange jello salad that my parents have promised me they are making for me just today. I haven't seen them in such a long time. And because they are vaccinated and we are going to be able to be outside, we are able to gather together once again. I know that many other families are also gathering with loved ones. And if it isn't you yet, it will be very soon. Mostly, I love church on Sunday, especially Easter Sunday. I love the story of the women discovering that the tomb was empty and that Jesus had risen from the dead. I love the stories of how Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was risen from the dead so that they might touch and see and feel that he indeed was real. I love Easter hymns, the one that we started off this service and the one that we will end this service. And I love the word Alleluia. Did you notice that we didn't use that word once during this whole season of Lent? And already on this Easter day, we have said the word Alleluia 16 times. Alleluia means praise God. And we use it especially on Easter Sunday, but we can use Alleluia anytime. When we see the rhubarb park poking out of the ground because it's finally spring in Minnesota, we can say Alleluia, praise God. When we snuggle up with our favorite stuffed animal, we can say Alleluia. When we share a meal with friends and with family, we can say Alleluia. Praise God. But on Easter, we especially say Alleluia because we praise God that Jesus didn't stay in the tomb, but Jesus was raised from the dead. And that means then Jesus is with us here and now in our hearts and in our lives, everywhere we go, no matter what. Now, you already know that I like to sing, and I want to sing a song this morning. Can you guess what the name of the song might be? It is Alleluia. And we sometimes sing this at St. Mark's on Easter Sunday especially, and so I thought it was fitting that we do it again. So I'm going to sing it one time through, and then I'm going to invite you to sing it with me. Now, the words are pretty challenging. They are, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You got it? Okay. It goes a little bit like this. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Sound familiar? Maybe, maybe to some of the older folks who have watched the service, who are watching the service, might sound familiar. So let's together sing it. And I want you to sing it loud because we are praising God for this day, especially. Ready? 
Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You can sing that song all day long. It is such an uplifting and joyful song. And on this Easter Sunday, that is what it is all about. So thanks for singing with me. And let's say a prayer before you go back. And I hope you stay for the rest of the service to hear the scripture about the women discovering the empty tomb and the proclamation that Jesus is risen. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for Easter Sunday. Thank you, God, for raising Jesus from the dead. Let us always sing Alleluia to you. Praise to you. Amen. Thanks for coming up. I hope you enjoy your Easter Sunday. So the scripture reading for this day comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stopped stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This ends today's reading. Easter hope in a Good Friday world. We weren't there that Good Friday so long ago. We weren't there to watch Jesus, our friend, our teacher, the one who healed and fed and welcomed and embraced all who came to him, the one called the Messiah. We weren't there to see him abandoned and betrayed and crucified upon a Roman cross for all to witness. We weren't there when they laid him in a tomb. We weren't there with the women waiting to anoint his body with spices and ointments, the last loving thing that they could do to someone that has died. We weren't there with the other disciples when their world was turned upside down and they were left alone, grief-stricken, grief-ridden, fearful, uncertain of what was to happen after the one that they had followed was now gone. But we know what it is like to live in a Good Friday world. A world in which the threat of nuclear weapons is a clear and present danger. A world where countless numbers of people die from starvation and disease each and every day. A world in which people, especially women, are exploited and used, abused, and sold into slavery. A world in which parents are so desperate that they will send their young children alone to our nation's border for the slightest possibility that they can have a better life here than where they have come from. A world where we witness people of color continue to be denied rights, equal rights, equal protection, equal opportunities, equal access, equal justice. 
Our nation continues to hear the news of yet another mass shooting. Lives cut tragically short. People left to grieve the loss of family members and friends. Lives lost to senseless violence again and again and again. How long, O oh Lord, we cry. And in the past 13 plus months, due to this worldwide pandemic, we have experienced even more loss. In this nation alone, millions have lost their jobs. So many businesses have struggled to survive. Some have had to shut their doors permanently. The need for food assistance has exponentially increased and we have seen long, long lines at food distribution sites. Our young people, have not been able to attend school in person, and many have fallen through the cracks, especially those who do not have access to the Internet. Our older people have been quarantined and isolated from friends and family, and thousands upon thousands have lost their lives to COVID-19. Of course, well before COVID, we knew what it was like to experience loss and grief, uncertainty, fear, the death of loved ones. Well before COVID, much of what our struggle, what our world struggles with was already in existence. We knew and know what it is like to live in what seems to be a Good Friday world. I could go on and on, but on this day, we join the multitudes with the women who found the empty tomb, with the disciples that soon discovered that the women were not telling an idle tale, with generations of those who have come before us and with generations who will come after us uh, with them on this day. We join in the refrain, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. There is Easter hope in a Good Friday world. The words to, my, to a favorite Easter hymn of a member of St. Mark's came to mind this week as I wrote this sermon. Marilyn died this past October. She lived through much in her 91 years of life. She had times of great joy and she had times of great sorrow. And the last few, last few years of her life were difficult. She often carried in her pocket a small rock with the word Alleluia painted on it. Several Easter's ago, they were handed out during an Easter service here at St. Mark's. They were given out to remind us that the stone that had been placed in front of Jesus' tomb had been rolled away, that the tomb was empty because Jesus had been raised from the dead. Alleluia! Praise God. And she would oftentimes pull it out of her pocket when the service was over, just to show me that she kept it with her always. At her funeral, Dan played and sang her favorite hymn, He Lives. Easter hope is expressed so well in the words of this hymn. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that Christ is living, whatever they may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. Why? Because he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me why I know he lives? He lives within my heart. Many times, whether it is the news of the world or our nation or even our own lives, sometimes it feels like Good Friday. And yet, and yet the women arrive and the stone is rolled back and the tomb is empty. Jesus is not there. He has been raised from the dead. Sin and hate do not have the final word. God does. And that word is life, and that word is love, and that word is hope. All is not lost, for God has raised Christ from the dead. And because of Easter, we can have new eyes 
The resurrection represents the divine yes to the human no. Human sin ultimately does not have the final victory. The good news of Easter is that in the midst of darkness, in the midst of grieving, in the midst of struggle and uncertainty and seeming death, God brings forth new life, new hope, new possibilities, new blessings. That was true then. That is still true today. God transforms Good Friday into Easter Sunday. This morning I want to share a story with you about God's transforming work in the life of Kim Fook. You have likely seen her picture, although you may not know the name at first. It is an iconic image that has come to define the horror and violence of the Vietnam War. It is the image of a nine-year-old girl running in agony after napalm bombs dropped by her own country of South Vietnam fell from the sky. The napalm burned away her clothing and seared deep into her skin. She was left for dead in a hospital morgue, but miraculously, she survived. Her next many years would be marked by excruciating treatments for her burns and unrelenting physical pain. Over and over again, she was used for political propaganda. On that day, she lost so much. Her home, her village, she lost family members, her country's freedom, her childhood innocence, and her happiness. Of course, many lost their lives in that war, but this is her story. She wrote and released a book in 2017 called Fire Road, and in it she tells her story of unexpected survival, years spent in constant pain, her life as a tool of a communist regime, love, family, and the unshakable life-altering faith that set her free. Ultimately, her life is transformed by faith in the risen Christ. It was her faith that gave her the conviction and strength to endure numerous surgeries and setbacks. It was her faith that gave her the strength to forgive all that had happened to her and to live her life not with bitterness, It was her faith in Christ that gave her peace beyond understanding. One might think that this would have been impossible, but if Easter Sunday tells us anything, it tells us that nothing is impossible with God. Kim Fook is often asked to be a speaker for her nonprofit organization, Kim Foundation International. She is also a UNICEF ambassador. And when she was in Turkey in 2016, at a time when thousands of refugees were fleeing for their lives from Aleppo, Syria, she was asked, As an ambassador of goodwill, you are obliged to say what your position is on these tragic matters of war. She responded, My position on this and all matters is forgiveness. My position, if you will, is love. My faith in Jesus Christ is what enabled me to forgive those who wronged me. And as you know, the wrongs were severe. My faith in Jesus Christ is what enabled me to pray for my enemies rather than curse them. And my faith in Jesus Christ has enabled me to love them. I do not just tolerate them, nor am I merely civil toward them. No, I love them. It is this love alone that ends wars. It is a powerful read, and I commend it to you. It is a story of Easter hope in a Good Friday world. We need to hear this good news time and time again. We need to hear this news, especially when we are at our lowest, when we are struggling to make meaning, when we feel as though we are all alone. The good news that Jesus Christ is not dead. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our hearts, leading us, strengthening us, comforting us, and offering life, offering us life here and now and in the time to come. Easter hope in a good Friday world with the resurrection, resurrected Christ in our midst. 
Christ calls us to love God's children, all God's children. And Christ convicts us to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We may be worshiping virtually, but Easter is not virtual. Easter is real. Easter is here. Easter is in our midst. The tomb is empty. Many of our church buildings are empty, but the church is not dead. The church is us reaching out into the world, serving and helping and praying and loving God and one another. Believing that Jesus is risen from the dead does not mean that our lives will always be easy or that we won't be filled with challenges or losses or grief. The promise is not that God will swoop in and take away all our sorrow and worry and troubles. The promise is that God will always be with us, will never abandon us to ourselves throughout all our days. The promise is that God can transform our Good Fridays into Easter Sundays. This is a message, a great message of hope and joy. It is a message meant to be shared with others. It is a message that is meant to be lived out with our lives. Jesus says, come, follow me. And so we do. Jesus offers us new life and hope and new joy and peace. Let us continue to not only tell the Easter story, but live out the Easter story this day and all the days of our lives. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Thank you for that inspiring message, Jennifer. Christ has risen indeed. Hallelujah. We have been richly blessed so that we might be a blessing to others. I invite you to give to the mission and ministry of this church as we seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus, offering hope and love to one another, ourselves, our loved ones, and our neighbors, both near and far. Thank you for your generosity. And now our prayers of the people. Let us pray, O God. We thank you for the excitement of Easter. Hearing the story of the stone being rolled away, the tomb being empty, and Jesus being raised from the dead quickens our pulse and stretches our imaginations. We stand before you in awe and wonder, in awe of your power, in wonder over the mystery of the Easter events. O oh God, our community and our world needs to experience your resurrecting power. In many ways, we need to experience your resurrecting power. We remember that although we are far from one another, we are not far from you. In the midst of life's trials, when all seems lost, Help us to remember your great love and the power of the resurrection, which tells us that life is greater than death, hope greater than fear, and love is greater than hate. The Holy Land, the place of our Easter story, is now a place filled with tanks and artillery, fear and mistrust. We ask that your resurrecting power might touch this embattled land and give it hope and peace. We pray for those throughout the world who have been the victims of violence and terrorism. We ask that your resurrecting power might touch their lives and give them hope. We also pray for all the world's leaders who make decisions on the behalf of so many. May they make decisions for the good of all the people. We pray for all those who are affected by this pandemic that is grip, still gripping our nation in our world. We pray for those who have lost their jobs and are struggling to make ends meet. We pray for health care workers who continue to care for those in greatest need. 
We pray for those who are struggling with isolation and loneliness. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We pray for those in our community and nation and world that continue to live with the soul-crushing sin of racism. Especially lift up in prayer our own community of Minneapolis as the trial for the former officer, Chauvin, continues. We pray for peace. We pray for justice. We pray for those in our community and in our lives who need healing. For all those we name in our hearts. For all those on our prayer list. We ask that you continue to touch their lives with your love and the love of others. So that they know they are not alone in these times of trial. Give them strength for the journey that lies ahead. Wisdom for the decisions that need to be made, and peace in their hearts. As we live in what can seem like a broken world, we thank you for the good news of Easter and the healing promise of your resurrecting power. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that only comes through you. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are invited to have a piece of bread in a cup nearby. Even an English muffin can become a sacrament. Even a cup of water or tea become a remembrance of God's redeeming love. Friends, we are gathered together around our many tables. Trusting that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is building a great table, one that transcends the distance between us. When Jesus took the bread and broke it in the presence of those disciples he walked with on the Emmaus Road, they recognized him. May we, those who gather around Christ's spiritual table, recognize him in this meal that unites us in Christ and with one another. May we find in this meal both compassion and joy, strength and consolidation, consolation, healing and wholeness, as together we walk in Easter light. God, we confess to you that while we know well the story of your victory over the grave, it is not a story we always live. We are dragged down by all manner of death. Fear may suffocate us. The loss of dreams and hopes for ourselves, our families, our communities, and our nation. Sorrow may walk us off like a grave, isolating us with anger, frustration, and grief. Forgive us when we allow hopelessness or fear or any other thing to keep us from you. I invite you into a time of silent confession. Friends, hear the words of the gospel. In Christ you are forgiven once again. Because God forgives our sin, our hearts are inscribed, not with the marks of death, but with the word, Alleluia, thanks be to God. Amen. We remember that on that night where Jesus gathered with his disciples that last time, he took bread and he lifted it up and blessed it and broke it and gave it to each of them gathered there, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and he lifted it up and he blessed it and he gave it to each of them gathered there, saying, this cup is a new covenant shed in my blood. Do this and drink this in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and we await Christ's coming again. We are one bread, one body, one cup of blessing. Though we are many throughout the earth and this church community is scattered, we are one in Christ. In your many kitchens or living rooms, I invite you to rest your hands lightly upon the elements which you have set aside today to be a sacrament, and let us ask God's blessing upon them. Please join me if you have a bulletin nearby. Gentle Redeemer, there is no lockdown on your blessing and no quarantine on grace. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon every table where your child resides so that this bread may be broken and gathered in love and this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Breathe in us so that we may breathe in you. Amen. Let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven, the bread of life. We are one in Christ in the bread we share. And then let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing, the new covenant. We are one in Christ in the cup we share. Let us pray in thanksgiving for this meal of grace, rejoicing that by the very method of our worship, we have embodied the truth that Christ's love is not limited by buildings made with human hands nor contained in human ceremonies, but flows as free as the Spirit in all places. Spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. May the eating of this bread give us courage to speak faith and act love not only in church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of our Good Fridays. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing, and let us become your compassion and safe refuge. Amen. Together, let us join our voices in the closing hymn for this Easter Sunday, Thine is the glory. Dan?
hear now the words of the benediction. May all the joy and the excitement of this day go with us. May the power of Christ's resurrection go with us. May the good news of this wondrous day go with us. May the promise and hope of Easter go with us. May we in the days ahead sing and pray and live and love and act and serve all for the glory of God. A joyous Easter today. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us all say Alleluia. Amen. Have a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you next week.